Welcome to part 2 of Shoutem's React Native Music App tutorial. Last time we built an app that could display a bunch of music genres and show a random Flickr image as album art, but it couldn't actually play any music because there were some issues with various React Native sound libraries. This week we're actually going to play music directly from SoundCloud and we're also going to make a nice player component that can play pause, previous next and show a waveform for SoundCloud music. Here's what our SoundCloud streaming app looks like after today's tutorial. You have a list of genres that you can scroll through and if you click alternative rock for instance it downloads a set of songs from SoundCloud and starts playing the first one. You get a player with a waveform in the back that it's going to fill out with orange and you can click next and pause and all those things. My computer is being too slow to show you interactions with the app so here's a gif I recorded earlier. In today's walkthrough we're going to focus on the player component. We're going to render a waveform, that's going to be one component. We're going to render the player controls, another component. We're going to play, render a timer that shows how long a song has been playing, that's going to be a third component. And we're going to have the player component itself which holds everything together. But before we get into that we should set up our Redux reducers and actions so that we know what we're building and we know the general state machine of how things work. This is roughly what we're building. We start with a song list and when you click play song we go to having a current song. From there we play and we are in a non pause state. If you press pause we go to a pause state. If you press previous song we decrement song index and go back to choosing the current song and playing. If you press next song we increment the song index, go to current song and so on. From pause you can also go to next or to previous or to next. In code that looks like this. We have a root reducer built out of three, re three reducers. The currently playing reducer which takes care of whatever's currently playing. The songs reducer which holds a list of all songs. And a genre reducer which holds an unchangeable list of genres that are available. So the genres reducer is a function that always returns the current state. The songs reducer returns the current state or if a found songs action was fired it returns an object with a new list of songs. Then we have the currently playing reducer which is a bit more interesting. In the case of playing genre action it sets the current genre sets our state to paused to not paused and resets current time. For set current song it sets the song index to whatever we give it. Update post flips the post boolean and set playtime updates the current time. Our actions are split into what I'm gonna call API actions and setter actions. I'm not sure that's the right nomenclature but let's go with it. So for API actions they're the actions that our components call to do stuff. And then setter actions are the actual little things that set that tell reducers what to do. For example we have the play genre tank which dispatches the playing genre action to set our current genre. Then it searches for music, dispatches the found songs action so that we update the, the song list that we have, sets the current song to the first index and plays the current song. The play current song action is fairly complicated because it's using React Native Music Control to talk to the OS's native music stuff. That's this thing here. So if you pull up from the bottom of your iOS and I think for Android it's a notification on top. This action is split into a couple of different stages. First we get the current song which we read from our state and we have to do some transformations because of how our state is structured. An explanation of why that happens is down in the article. Then we set enable some controls for, or rather we disable some controls in the music controller because we don't need them. Uh, subscribe to our to callbacks from the various buttons on uh, on the OS controls and in the end we tell the OS what we're playing so that it can display an, an album and some metadata. Compared to that our other API actions are fairly simple. We have pause current song which tells the music controls that we are pausing playback and then dispatches update paused, play next song which sets the current song then plays it play previous song which also updates current song and then plays it and update playtime which 
updates the current time and also tells OS Music Controls that we are advancing through the song. Great, time for rendering. Our player component is a full React component connected to Redux that gets the currently playing stuff and the list of songs that are available as its props. To render the player, our component first checks if the current song is already available and if it's not, it loads a spinner. If we do have the song, we load a SoundCloud wave as the background and another view on top of that one that has controls and the timer. And we're using absolute positioning to get them to overlay each other. And the real trick behind playing our music is that we're using a video component from React Native Video to play our songs. The reason we're doing that is because this is the only sound library I was able to find that can actually stream music. Everything else only worked with local files, or it said that it can do remote files, but it didn't actually play anything when I tried. So the video component is implicitly invisible because it doesn't have any size. And we also tell it whether we're currently paused, uh, the song URL. We ask it to play in the background, and that's important because without that, our song would stop as soon as you closed the app or did anything that made the act inactive. And there's also a couple of um, event callbacks that we use to change our state. So every time that the progress updates, I think that's every 250 milliseconds, we update current time on the entire app. And when the song is over, we uh, move to the next song. We're doing this with these helper, helper functions up here. And to make access to the percentage play, which we're using to fill the sound wave and to the current song. We have some getter functions in our component. And I'm not really sure if these should go in the Redux function up here or if it's okay to have getters, but it seems to work fine. So I don't know, I guess it doesn't really matter in the end. As you can imagine, the timer and controls components are fairly boring in comparison. Timer just takes the current time and renders it as minutes and seconds and controls takes uh, a connection to, re to Redux, renders a bunch of icons with on-press callbacks that dispatch actions. Not much to do there. But the Soundwave component, now that was fun to build. It's split into two parts. First part is loading the actual Soundwave information from SoundCloud, which comes in a, in a JSON that's a list of numbers. Each number tells us how high a bar, a bar in a bar chart should be for that particular time location. And then we have the actual rendering, which takes all of that and renders the bar chart. Now, because we get a lot of information, sometimes hundreds, even thousands of data points for each song, we chunk them up into as many chunks as we have room for bars. So we have a 180 pixel wide card and we're gonna render three pixel wide bars in it. So that's, so that's 180 divided by three, which means we need 60 different chunks of data. We take those and we calculate for each bar, we calculate the, mid, the average value of that entire chunk. So in, in theory, we're doing like interpolate. With those chunks in hand, we basically go through them all. And for each one, we render a view component which is set to have a background of the appropriate color, either orange if it's before the timeline, gray if it's after, and we give it a pixel, uh, a width of two pixels, a margin of one pixel so that they're not too tight together, and a height, and that's basically it. I'm not sure if this is the right way to render bar charts in React Native because it's pretty much the same as using a bunch of divs on the web, but it works really well and I didn't want to deal with figuring out how to render SVG in a React Native component. And that's our magic app. Don't forget, Don't forget to subscribe, to subscribe so you can get the app. Please suggest an app that you should build in the comments.